Hi, my name is Root, and today I'm going to be going over dynamic figure drawing uh, for the female breast. Uh, I'm using this book uh, called Dynamic Figure Drawing by uh, Hogarth, and uh, fortunately for you and I, today we're going to be uh, doing this thing that is just skirting the very edges of uh, acceptable behavior for uh, artists online, and that is uh, one can use female presented nipples uh, when one is referring to anatomy, and I think this is why uh, breast tutorials are so popular. Uh, everyone, uh, everyone loves breasts, this is a developmental thing in the human life, and um, and it seems very natural for people to want to be able to draw them. And I make erotic comics, so this is one of the things that I would like to draw well, and that's why we're doing this exercise. Something really cool about this um, process is uh, that in spite of the fact that our motivations, uh, my motivations, uh, have sexual um, attraction behind them, uh, it's fun to be able to draw female breasts that aren't sexualized uh, because um, you don't always need to have a sexualized uh, female figure uh, and not all breasts are gigantic. There's definitely a trend in, uh, in hentai and in, uh, you know, uh, I guess any kind of erotic comic or something, any kind of pinup, you're gonna have like really sizable breasts, and you know, you know, breasts are nice and it's a cool thing, uh, but uh, not everyone has these big knockers, you know, and uh, it's kind of a cool thing to be able to just draw uh, a chest of a female who is a regular human, and uh, so that's something that I'm actually kind of happy about. One of the things that I was excited about. Um, for this, this Hogarth approach. Because um, I noticed one of the things that I was doing is uh, I was integrating the previous lessons um, and constructive anatomy approaches toward uh, what is the larger chest cavity and what are the planes of the face. And like it all kind of pieces together. It's just we happen to be talking about breasts uh, at this point. So here we go again, we're going to be discussing uh, these female breasts and we're going to be looking at uh, Hogarth's uh, wonderful uh, figurative correlations here again. Uh, we have, special note, should be made of the drawing of female breasts on the rib cage. In general appearance, the young adult female breast has the look of an overturned teacup positioned at the lower angle of the chest. And you know this is a this is excellent because as a person I am just as compelled by these breasts as I am by that abdomen, by the shoulder, and I also love these planes that are happening. The uh, this right here is actually kind of fantastic to me. Uh, this sort of slice of this side of the shoulder and how that goes down here and this the inner. Uh, inner wall or inner side of uh, the chest cavity, I suppose. I'm a fan. I love that uh, these planes are just so simplified and strong, and that was kind of a real pleasure to work on. Uh, you'll also notice, because the humans are the humans, uh, that this information that we received during our previous study about this, uh, the bottom cavity of the rib cage, uh, still applies. You know, same thing, just We've got uh, significantly more muscle here than over here. Again, these are all sort of like prototypical um, human uh, anatomy, human physiology type uh, things, you know, men. Uh, typically, more testosterone, um, more uh, muscle mass capacity, um, women typically less. Uh, this is not a... Uh, all of them, but it is a many of them uh, type rule. Uh, nipple placement, we discussed that yesterday uh, when we were doing the male torso. Um,
this is uh, the, uh, you've got sort of this, the sternum line, and then this is the 45 degree, 90 degree total that was being discussed yesterday. I really enjoy these little, um, these little simplified illustrations because uh, when we're doing these sorts of things, it's uh, kind of really well rendered, and uh, this is sort of indicating to me that Hogarth understands that uh, you can do a simplified thing and a more realistic thing, and that both of them are just as valid. Um, I guess some small subtleties that I really enjoyed in this uh, illustration. Let me take this for you. Um, I loved how this line right here happens. Because this is sort of another component of uh, the... Remember the barrel concept from our previous uh, video? Uh, so we still have the barrel happening, uh, but there's also this other line sort of in opposition to it, which uh, allows us to sort of get the hard lines that are happening here uh, underneath the breast. This is because um, gravity is happening, and uh, it's nice to have this sort of weight, the weight of it all, the weight of humanity is is uh, is happening on these breasts. And kind of a cool thing is happening down here too, uh, where this uh, abdomen is being defined with these little um, curves, you know? That's, uh, that's a pleasant deal. One of the pieces of information that Hogarth provided us with was uh, not only about nipple placement, uh, but also nipple direction. And this is kind of an obvious, maybe I even messed up on that a little bit, maybe the nipple should be over here. Uh, nipple direction. Just, just remember uh, some absurd thing about milk squirting out or something, and you'll, where the nipple is directed at. Like, you wanna, you wanna have a natural thing happening here, because if you don't, people are gonna notice, and it's gonna be weird and uncomfortable, and you're gonna miss out on all of the good reasons why you decided to paint a woman, because people aren't gonna be able to like handle it. Something's wrong, they're gonna say, and uh, it's because you didn't pay attention to Hogarth. Wow, I'm excited about doing abdomens next. This was, this is kind of cool. I like how this is happening here. One other thing that I'd like to point out in this sort of uh, the women are smaller than the men type uh, theme, this, uh, the collarbone structure that's represented here is significantly smaller uh, and less pronounced than the collarbone structure over here in this male torso. This is a, uh, everything here is uh, very, looks very Apollo, doesn't it? Very David, you know, it's, it's, uh, we've got a lot of pronounced muscles, we've got a lot of pronounced, like, this pronounced jugular thing, like, all this, all this really strong forms. And then over here, they're just not as strong. I think even on this, this side over here, right, like, uh, we've got more weight to it, so, uh, not even, we're not even looking at six packs anymore. Uh, I realize that not everyone has six packs. That's not what this video is about. Mind your own business. <laughs> uh, however, it is a trope to have uh, superheroes with six packs and men with six packs and whatnot. And I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, Hogarth over here has um, a six pack on this woman, but then over here, it's like not four is sufficient. And it's kind of a cool thing to see how the abdomen is divided up uh, when you have less uh, muscle definition. Let's see what this says. When both breasts are shown, especially in a three-quarter view, they can never be seen simultaneously from a direct frontal position. One breast will always be seen with its centrally located nipple disc face on nipple disc. It's called an areola, dude face on, while the other will be seen 
in a side view with its nipple projecting in profile. Yep, that's totally a thing. A lot of the times when people are lounging like that, uh, you're not going to have a nice clean uh, representation of where all the forms are at because that's not how people exist in real life. So right here we've got someone sort of, maybe they're stretching, looks like they're stretching and lounging at the same time. And we still have these kind of really fun uh, markers that are being used and demonstrated in the previous one. This, uh, this line that sort of like has the weight, remember, the sort of underside, uh, and then the chest cavity, and then the abdomen, uh, belly button, and then the hips kind of like jutting out from either side and the uh, whatever structure that, that's there from the hip bones. Um, let's see what this is. Observe the positioning of the nipple discs. <laughs> Observe. Observe the nipple discs. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, check the 90, 90 degree angle at the pit of the neck for the correct placement of the nipples. Yeah, I think that's just what he was discussing over here. So there's not really a lot of uh, strong details that I'm receiving from Hogarth today. Uh, but maybe that's because I've spent a lot of time drawing women, and so I'm already aware of these kinds of things. Mm. There are other tutorials that are very useful, and they cover things such as, like, uh, it's nice to have a concept of weight. Uh, you're not going to have circles. They're kind of more ovals. Um, the way that the weight is held sometimes has differences, like if you're working, you know, the underside that is being discussed right here, if the breasts are larger, there's going to be a more significant uh, line right here and right here. If the breasts are smaller, there's going to be a less significant line, um, maybe not even a line at all. Uh, and these are just sort of the things that you want to keep in mind uh, when you're painting uh, women, when you're drawing women, when you have characters that have breasts. Mm, these ones were not in Hogarth. I just kind of did a little bit of uh, experimental drawing because I needed to fulfill my quota, my self-imposed quota. This is, yeah, try not to be too critical of yourself when you make mistakes when you're doing these drawings. It's not going to help you. Just, just do more. You're going to get some good ones and not good ones, and even if you have some good ones, uh, you can probably make them better. Like this one right here, I could probably make that better if I just continue to draw on it. It's got a good foundation. That's all for now. Uh, join me tomorrow and we'll be discussing uh, and practicing how to do uh, these really cool boxes for uh, the pelvis and the upper chest. Uh, this is really fascinating to me because I want to have more depth in my drawings and I think that this box construction might just be the ticket. This channel is about me becoming a better artist and sharing myself exhibitionistically with you so that you can join me if you would like. If this sounds exciting to you, I would encourage you to like and subscribe.